Did you know that while most of the tech giants do their own PCBA or printed circuit board assembly, they don't actually make the circuit boards themselves? That's almost exclusively outsourced. Why do you think that is? Today, um, we're gonna find out. I'm Noah from Machina, and today we're visiting a PCB factory where they manufacture high precision, high speed printed circuit boards up to 20 layers thick. That's a really complex board. So now PCBs constitute really the, the foundation of all modern electronics, including like mission, uh, mission critical applications like self-driving cars and medical equipment where like failure could constitute loss of life, right? Now, given how important the reliability of these printed circuit boards is, why do you think it is that um, these tech giants are still outsourcing production of them to uh, factories like this instead of doing it in-house where they can oversee the quality control themselves? There are good reasons, and today we're gonna find out. So, I'm here in the raw materials warehouse now, and all of these uh, stacks of sheets behind me are the different copper clad sheets. And a copper clad sheet is made up of a, uh, a fiberglass substrate, a layer of resin, and then copper foil. Uh, so this actually a sample, uh, this strip is cut from one of those sheets. Um, so this is 12 layers of this laminated together, basically glued together. Why do we need so many layers? Um, there are a few reasons. Uh, those can be uh, minimizing electromagnetic interference, uh, power distribution, component density, just being able to fit more parts into a smaller space. Sort of the most fundamental one is making it easier to design boards. Think of it like two highways. Uh, do we have an intersection with red and green lights uh, when two highways intersect? No, we have an underpass or an overpass, right? One's going to go under the other. So in this case, um, we have our one wire and the other wire is coming. We're going to go down to another layer underneath that first wire and then back up to the top where it originally was. This is hard to do um, because with all of these tiny circuits on each layer, they need to stay perfectly aligned throughout the manufacturing process. Now this facility specializes in doing that at very high quality and um, we're gonna go see how they do that. Onward. So now I'm in the lithography room and between the raw materials warehouse and here, our copper clad sheets have gotten cut down to size and washed and they come in through this sort of little uh, airlock uh, slot. Um, now the process that happens in this room is not entirely unlike the one used to manufacture microchips instead of nanometer level scale. But a micrometer, you know, we're still talking about a hundredth the width of a, a human hair. So the first part in this process um, is the application of what's called a photoresist film. And that's happening in this machine here. And that's basically converting our copper surface into a sort of uh, film into which we're going to expose an image of our circuit. And you can hear, see here, these copper clad sheets have already had the uh, photo resist film applied to it, hence the different color from when it came in. So now we're gonna head over to the lithography machines where that exposure is actually going to happen. Now that our copper clad board has had photo resist uh, applied to both sides, it's like a piece of film onto which we want to expose an image. That image basically being our circuit design 
uh, for this layer of our PCB. Now you can see over here, there are two what are called masks into which our film is going to be placed between them and it's going to go into this machine where it's exposed to very intense UV light, basically imprinting that image of our circuit onto our film, onto that photoresist. Now, uh, you can see here, this sheet has already been through this process um, and has that pattern imprinted on it. The thin lines here uh, will basically stay and uh, the thicker areas will be washed away in the development process that we're gonna go on to next. Um, now, I don't know if you can uh, notice the different lighting in this room. Uh, that's due to the fact that the uh, photoresist is very sensitive to certain wavelengths of light, not this one. So now we've moved on from the lithography room to the development process. And uh, it's interesting to note that management here uh, emphasized to us that they're really more of a chemistry company than an electronics company. And this is the room where that really shows. So our panels from the lithography room are coming through a, a lock directly into these machines. And uh, the first thing that's happening here is that it's stripping away the portion of that photoresist where we want to remove the copper that's on the board, leaving only the copper that will be part of our final board. So it's stripping that away and then rinsing it here with water. And we can actually see that here. The blue portion that was covering the part that we want to remove is gone. Now it's going from there into the actual etching process. But this is removing all of the copper that we don't want on the surfaces uh, of that board. And here we go. You can see right through all that copper's gone. But we still have the photoresist film covering the copper we want. That's being stripped away in these, these tanks here. And they're coming right out here into this pneumatic stacking machine. These are then going to get inspected. This is our first automated optical inspection stage. But what's coming out of there looks something like this. And you can see the only copper that's left on there is exposed and is the copper that we want in our final product. Now, we haven't gotten to the hard part yet. And the hard part is that we're going to have to stack these up and make sure they're perfectly aligned. So what we're seeing in this room is something I've actually never seen before, which is the stack up being assembled before pressing. So in these stacks here, and we're gonna watch them uh, put them together, um, there are three uh, double-sided sheets um, that, that have circuitry on them, right? Um, and they have pre-drilled registration holes on them. Those holes are uh, going to be used to put those sheets onto alignment pegs on this machine here. Um, he's then placing uh, sheets of dielectric material uh, according to the customer's requirements, for instance, for impedance control and so forth, um, in between uh, those uh, sheets with the circuitry on it. And, um, and along the edges of those sheets, is a um, is a registration pattern. Now, when that when this stack up, um, so the manually assembled stack up goes into this machine, it shines infrared light through those uh, common registration patterns that are on all of these sheets. Makes sure that they're aligned perfectly by checking that they're all perfect circles and and the arrays line up. Those stack ups have come into a room where they're going to have a layer of copper foil added to either side. That's then going to go on to the pressing process. Those 
multi-layer uh, stacks that we saw getting capped off with uh, copper foil on the top and bottom um, in that last room have now come into this room and are being uh, basically cooked at uh, about 200 degrees Celsius and uh, under 26 kilograms of pressure for the next uh, three to four hours. Now that we have those, those monolithic stack-ups, those multi-layer stack-ups, um, we need to connect the circuitry on those different layers. Now to do that, we're gonna use this awesome drilling machine to drill holes between the layers. We're then going to electroplate the inside of those holes, essentially creating vertical wires between them and, and connecting the different layers so that we have continuous wires weaving through the layers around each other um, to get the signals to where they need, uh, need to be. So um, you can see this machine here is simultaneously drilling these via holes um, in, in multiple panels using these teensy tiny little drill bits. You know, they can go down to, uh, you know, 0 0.1 millimeters, uh, or in some cases, even smaller. Um, now, something to note is that um, these holes can't always be drilled all the way through because of something called partial vias and buried vias, where going all the way through would cut through uh, one of the other signals. In those cases, the holes need to be drilled to a very precise depth. By the way, what we just saw was a tool head change. It just switched the drill bit that it's using. Very cool. So for this next step, what we're going to do is dip those panels into a very precisely formulated electroless copper plating solution. And that's going to deposit a thin layer of copper inside the vias to connect those layers. After that, we're going to go on to an electroplating step, which is going to thicken the, the copper that's been deposited into the vias to just the right amount to give it the precise amount of conductivity necessary for sensitive signals like high-speed um, impedance control differential pairs, for instance. And then after that, we're going back for another round have a finished multi-layer PCB. So before we end today's video, um, I do want to explain that there were quite a few steps that we couldn't show you guys. And in fact, management here uh, basically told us that if we wanted to understand every step in every detail, it would take us a month. We had a day and I think we did a pretty good job of squeezing a lot in there and sort of giving you the gist of a lot of the processes. I actually learned a lot. Um, you know, this is a panel of one of the PCBs that uh, I designed. I didn't really picture how much was going on in the background to, uh, you know, to produce that. Um, next time I order um, a set of, of PCBs, I'm going to be visualizing that entire process. It may also inform some of my engineering decisions. Also, having seen that complexity, I think that answers the question about why even big companies outsource these processes to expert facilities like this. And speaking of expert facilities, um, we've really done our utmost here at Machina to try and find, uh, you know, first class, best of the best uh, factories to show you. And if you want to be connected with them, please just let us know. Don't hesitate to get in touch and we'll put you in touch with them. Um, also, of course, like and subscribe. Don't do that. <laughs>